Hey, welcome back to my channel where I'm building a RANS S21 plane. Uh, first, a quick disclaimer. Uh, none of my videos are instructional videos. I'm a first time builder and I'm just documenting my build. Uh, second, let's talk about the whirlwind prop issue and kind of an update. I put a video out uh, not too long ago about issues with the uh, bolts in this hub uh, shearing and then also some people have reported uh, cracks or broken hubs. Uh, Rands put out a operation alert on March 27th that basically says to inspect uh, the bolts, check for torque, and then look for hairline cracks in and around. These are the retention bolts up here. The issue is primarily focused around the older hubs and you can tell the older hubs that all these bolts are 3 8 bolts the newer hubs, the retention bolts, which are the four at the ends, the retention bolts are 7 sixteenths. So not only are they larger bolts, but they're torqued to 40 pound, foot pounds instead of the 30 of the 3 8 So that appears to be an issue with the old, it appears to be an issue with the, uh, the older hubs. Um, the other thing Rands recommends is that you get your prop dynamically balanced. They are apparently the props are balanced when they're manufactured. But after you install them, you want to get them balanced for your specific engine. Uh, read the service alert or uh, operation alert for yourself. Do frequent checks. Check your torques. Uh, oh, the other common denominator appears to be on the uh, frequent changing of your pitch. This is a ground adjustable prop. You may set your pitch for cross country, and then you may readjust it for some back country operation, then back to cross country. And I guess the torquing and retorquing uh, degrades the quality of the bolt. So if you are doing a lot of pitch changes, you may want to consider uh, getting replacement bolts that you will change every so often. Um, but that's the update on that. Uh, in this episode, I'm getting my uh, plane ready to rivet the boot cowl. There's a lot in here and above the floorboards I want to make sure I don't have to get to. I want to make sure I don't have to get to my avionics shelf. So I'm getting things prepared. And in this episode, I get the Naka scoops put into the boot cowl. I get the um, outside air temperature installed. Uh, I get the pedostatic ports, hoses all run. And then I also put in a uh, uh, iPad mount, a RAM iPad mount, which um, I'll show it here, but I, I also show it in the video. So with that, let's, uh, let's get going. This is the package that Rand sends with the Naka scoop and some duct work, uh, which has to go onto the boot cowl before we do the final install. And I'm going to spray paint these with some primer and then some black, just so they're not so obvious. The uh, Naka scoop and vent system installation is on page 119 of the text, and then 10 E04 and 03 for the parts diagrams. Okay, I'm moving ahead of getting these NACA scoops put on to the cowling. Um, they go on, I spray painted them black. They're pretty easy. There's three holes already pre-drilled. Just match drill them into the NACA to a number 30. Some builders have added a couple rivets here. I may do that. If Randy designed it with three, it's probably good with three. Um, looks like I, I uh, primed that, and I'm trying to remember why. Maybe because it's up against the steel cage, but the steel cage is powder coated. Don't know. Uh, can't hurt to have some primer. So I get the Naka scoops on and um, move forward from there. Well, here's another set of instructions that I just don't get what they're asking, and I'm just going to move forward with what I think I need to do. This talks about finding the location of the uh, uh, vents in your panel. Then it says use the eyeball vent, and we know what that is. That's, uh, that's this guy is the eyeball vent. It says use the eyeball vent and transfer drill through the hose adapter flange. Now the only thing I can think about that is that this is the hose adapter flange, but what are you going to transfer drill? This just shows a clamp clamping the hose on. The flange just screwed, you know, I put the eyeball on here and I screwed, screwed the flange part back onto the threads. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to transfer drills. Okay, I'm going to deviate once again, and I hope it doesn't get me in trouble. 
In theory, this next step is done after skinning, painting, and installation of the boot cowl, which I'm assuming means riveting. Apply the silicone to the, the NACA scoop, rivet to, the ins, rivet to inside of boot cowl, which is this. Install instrument panel with vent hose adapter installed, and then attach the duct hose. Um, I'm going to go ahead and silicone and rivet it now. I can't imagine why it needs to be done after the boot cowl is installed. As I'm preparing to install my NACA scoop, I'm realizing that the inside of the boot cowl is the inside surface that's going to be visible from the cockpit. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the time and clean this up, prime it, and paint it uh, so that it's a better appearance from the cockpit. Uh, I'm mounting the NACA scoop on the inside of my boot cowl. Uh, I had them all painted black, but I decided to paint it the cream color. This is actually the inside of my boot cowl where my legs will be. I didn't like the aluminum look, and this just seemed like it took away uh, that bare metal look. So this is just a, a kind of a beige uh, metal spray paint that I used to give it a little better look. Uh, and then this just gets siliconed, dropped on there. I'm using 100% silicone. Uh, to seal it and then that gets riveted. Uh, you rivet these on with AVEX rivets but there is a 1 8 uh, washer that goes on on the inside as well so don't forget the washer. This is my pilot side boot cowl and it looks like from the pictures that I've seen I couldn't find anything in the installation manual about the uh, uh, static ports but it looks like they've got them just below and forward of the NACA duck. And I'll attach a couple pictures, but it looks like this is where I put the uh, static ports. Okay, uh, before I finish the, the cowling, uh, a lot of places say get the boot cowl finished up. And so far I've been able to do the work on the cowling with having the clecos back here and just kind of leaving these holes empty. But there is an indication that I need to get my boot cowl done. Before I do that, there's a bunch of stuff I need to get done. I need to run the video coax from my camera, my cow cam in the front up over the engine and it looks like there's a video coax connection on the G3 so I'm assuming that's where that goes. Uh, I've got to correct the mini sensor harness issues underneath here uh, that this AP left and I'll, that's another video. Um, then I've got to run the static lines from the G3 sensor. So these are the, these are the uh, pitot static ports here. And the last one's the static line AOA and pitot. That, that also has to get run uh, out to the wing or uh, back to where the ring, wing is. And then this static line is got to come out, split in the T, and then go into the static sensors that are in the boot cowl. Uh, then I got to connect the outside air temperature gauge. This is the OAT gauge my panel company left me. This gives me enough room to put it in the, the NACA scoop, but I don't want to put it in the NACA scoop, so I've got to add a splice to get this back to here, and then my 10-foot lead from the OAA sense, OAT sensor will come down and connect with that. So I've got to get all that done before I get my boot cowl done. I installed a RAM iPad mount uh, on my panel. I've got the USB jacks right here behind it for charging. And that just mounts in. I found some space just above my ELT indicator. And rather than having a nice second 10-inch screen, I'll have an iPad here to act as an assistant in the cockpit. I picked up the outside air temperature sensor from, where did I get, Aircraft Spruce yesterday. It's about a $500 sensor. I did contact the foreman to see if the Dynon or one of the others and I was told that with the G3, you can only use the Garmin, so they get you for a $500 sensor. My next project is to mount this outside air temperature probe. This is the Garmin probe, which was kind of pricey. The issue that I've got is this cable that they include with the probe is not long enough to mount under the wing, which is where a lot of people mount it, and get back to the uh, hookup for my panel company left me which goes to the side of my boot cowl basically. Um, I've seen a lot of people talk about putting it under the wing, well I don't have a wing on it obviously, put it under the wing for shade and uh, keeping it away from the engine from heat and then I've heard many people talk about mounting it in the NACA scoop. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the NACA scoop. Uh, I made that decision. 
Uh, make your own decision. There's research both ways. It's done. It's not done. And everyone's got to make their own choice on that. The uh, oh, first I'm going to repeat my comments that uh, this is not an area of my expertise. So I'm just reading and following instructions. Uh, this by no way is an instructional video. This is just me showing you how I'm doing it. And I encourage you to do your own research um, to determine your own method of installation. Um, in looking at the manual instructions, uh, they show how this, this um, uh, lead off the harness loops around and connects underneath before you put it through the surface of the mounting. Another thing to note is that it needs to be grounded and because the Naka scoop is not metal uh, it tells you that you can use a strap, a grounded strap to the uh, sensor itself. So I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to run a strap. Probably what I'm going to do is run a grounding strap down to probably uh, to the frame here underneath or on top of the uh, uh, support bar that I need to put in here and I'll probably use that and run it to ground. Okay, what I decided to do is I installed this OAT sensor with this wrap around and then I created using a 14 gauge a uh, little strap and I sanded away and acetoned away the paint and I'll put this down when I lay my support strip down here and when I rivet this in, this will create a ground over to the sensor. Ag, I hate making bonehead mistakes. Uh, I went to pin up the boot cowl to determine the wiring distance and everything else. And this um, pedo sensor, static sensor, is conflicting with the frame. Um, it needs to be down about another half inch. So I think what I can do, I think I can move it down. It's just a little bit and then have the top part of this cover the existing hole. We'll see if that'll work. Otherwise, I'm going to have to patch this hole and relocate it. Ah, what a, what a dummy. Okay, I, uh, I moved my temperature probe wire. Remember, it was coming out down here. I unloomed it. And I think I'm just going to run it straight back to the uh, temperature sensor, which is in the NACA scoop, which would be right here. So it's really not a very far run. I'll leave a little extra in there for maneuverability, but I think I'll just wire it and, and we're done with the uh, OAT. Uh, I put in this uh, stringer, support stringer on the boot cowl. Also ran that ground wire where I'd sanded away some of that paint and cleaned off this burr and put a ground in there. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run the pedo static AOA hoses from the back of the GSU 25. They come plugged uh, from the factory and I bought some, I'll take this over with me, and I bought some adapters, some hose adapters, some T's, angles, and these are actually MPT threads that go in right into the back of the 25 and then the hose will push push into that. So this is what I'm going to use to run my pedo hose, static hose, etc. Uh, if you get, this is out of the Garmin manual, if you get a light back there you can see that they're marked static, AOA, and pedo. Um, but you can see it but you need to get your head back in there. It's easier just to confirm that this is the setup. Uh, the fittings that I bought that go in the back of the uh, GSU 25 uh, actually are already pre-taped uh, at the thread, I bought some Permatex uh, high temperature sealant, which I was going to use, but these are all set to go. Uh, so we'll just get those in and torqued appropriately and then start with the hose connection. Uh, the next thing I need to get done is I need to get this tubing uh, to my pedo system uh, run from the back of the G3 over here. I've got two, one for the AOA, one for the pedo. And they've got to run through and back. And then I've got to leave them kind of hanging here to hook up to the uh, pedos out of the wing. Okay, I've hooked them up to the back of the G3. Run them through. They run back. I've got them zip-tied. And then I've got them just coming out here where the 
other attachments for the wing. Okay, well that's a pretty good place to stop. Um, that section took 24.4 hours, which brings my build to date to 1301 hours. The uh, 24 hours does include six hours that I spent with the AMP fixing the um, uh, electronic ignition issue, which I didn't go into a lot of detail about, but it does include six hours for that. Um, in the next next episode, I hook up my video camera cable. It's a cow cam for the front cow front uh, engine cow. Um, I do a dimmer wire. I add brake fluid to the brakes, and then I'm also start preparing for my first engine start. I've decided that I do want to get my engine started, make sure it's running before I put the boot cow on, just in case I have to get into this electronic ignition area and work on it. It's uh, the access here is so much nicer to get in this way versus having to crawl in from under here. So that'll be in my next video, which I hope to get out shortly. Uh, again, thanks for watching and remember, dream it and just build it.